Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Fayetteville. We are very glad you are here, that you have chosen to spend some time with us in gathering this morning, both physically as well as those of you who are joining us virtually on Facebook Live. My name is Joe Ucolano. I currently serve on our board of directors as the immediate past president of our fellowship. Uh, and I uh, want you to know that Unitarian, Universalist, U Unitarian Universalism is a religious tradition that values freedom in religious thought and journey. We uphold the unity of our interconnections, connections to each other, to all of life, and to the precious universe of which we are a part. We affirm the universality of love and hope as we journey together in community. And we welcome you, whoever you are at this moment and wherever you are in your spiritual journey. For those of you joining us online, welcome. If you're new, please check out our website, uufayetteville.org, for more information. If you are here and new, those of you who are visiting us for the first time in person, you'll find a visitor information card in the seat back in front of you. If our Sunday service hosts haven't stopped you already, uh, we'd love for you to fill one of these out and uh, get on our email list and keep you informed of our events. So please, please do that if you're new and let us know. Later in our service, we'll have time where you are invited to come forward and drop a stone, one of our rituals in Unitarian Universalism, symbolizing your joy or concern into a boil of water, into a bowl of water. <laughs> that would be you, you, into a boil of water. If you have a joy or concern you'd like to share, we invite you to fill out one of these yellow cards, which you'll find in the seat back. Um, there's a place on here to indicate if you want your joy or concern shared aloud, or if you would prefer to have it confidential and shared only with leadership. If you fill out the yellow card, you can bring it forward at the time that we have in the service when we're doing our joys and concerns where you drop your stone, um, or you may uh, just leave it with one of the ushers and I'll take it and we'll, we'll read them aloud if that's what you're choosing to do. Um, please note for those of you who are making comments on Facebook Live, those are public, they are not private, but we appreciate your joys and concerns there as well. Anyone having any problem with hearing um, assistance today, our, our tech specialist, David, uh, will help you with that. We have some devices that can be of helpful. helpful. Uh, and of course, children's are, children are always welcome in our service, but also know we have a staff nursery uh, downstairs if you prefer to have your child uh, there. So please remember to silence your phone as we enter our service. And I just want to make a note that we, I'm very lo much looking forward to today. I want to thank Charlotte Taylor, who has uh, organized today's service, and she's our membership um, team leader. Um, today's service is a celebration of membership, and you will hear from a number of our generations of members uh, here from, at the UU. So welcome, and we're glad you're here. Please join us in, as we light our chalice and begin our service. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its prayer to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in truth, and to help one another. Thus do we covenant together. As Joe said, my name is Charlotte Taylor, my husband, Tim Hudson. We joined this fellowship in December of 20, 2001. The UUF has a long history, and I am holding our membership book now. I love old things. So does Tim, that's why he stays with me. Um, but this book is great because it started back in 1965 when this building opened as a home for our fellowship. And for our opening words, I would just like to read what's in the beginning of this book as our Articles of Incorporation. The purpose of this organization shall be to provide a place of worship and in connection therewith to bring together persons of liberal religious attitudes to protect individuals' freedom of belief, to promote democratic processes in human relations, to provide religious and ethical training for ourselves and our children, to seek to accomplish this purposes through group study, worship, service, 
recreation, and through cooperation with others in the community. So that's what we have been living by, and we'll be talking more about this membership book and using it later in our service. So today we're going to celebrate members, young, old, um, long time, recent, those that have moved on, those that have passed away, but it is a celebration. So please, if you will stand as you are able, we're going to start with our opening hymn, Gather the Spirit, page 347. singing. You may be seated. Well, Stephanie picked out, what's that? Oh, there you are. I was like, I don't see Stephanie anywhere. Oh my goodness. <laughs> where Oliver fits. And this story speaks a lot to me personally in my spiritual journey. Never really felt like I fitted in at the Methodist church where my dad was a preacher. I asked too many questions, etc. But I definitely feel like I fit here. I wonder if you will relate. Do you ever wonder where you fit? Could it be here? Or maybe over here? Oliver wondered too. Do you see him down there at the bottom? <laughs> Oliver could not wait to see where he fit. He wanted to be part -er of something exciting, something wild, something out of this world. On his first try, it didn't go so well. His second try, 
not much better. And on his third try, well, all he got was a laugh. Being myself is getting me nowhere, Oliver thought. Maybe I have to be more like them and less like me. If they want red, I can be red. <clears throat> it worked at first. The red pieces were happy to see Oliver. That is until the red rubbed them the wrong way. And then Oliver thought, okay, forget my color. How about my shape? If they want square, I can be the squarest there is. Oliver tried lots of things. Too tall, too short, too pointy, too bulky, not right, all wrong. But no matter what Oliver did or how hard he tried, all he heard was, no, no, no. That's it, Oliver shouted. If someone else is what they want, someone else is what they'll get. In a flurry, Oliver cut, taped, and glued until he was nowhere to be seen. I'll be sure to fit this time. Oh, hello there, the other pieces greeted him. Please join us, friend. We love your fancy shape and what fetching colors. Where were you hiding? Where have you been? Oliver joined them. And guess what? He fit. He fit so well no one had a clue. It was really him. Everything was perfect. Except everything didn't feel perfect. In fact, it didn't feel right at all. If I have to hide and pretend I'm someone else, am I really still me? Oliver thought. And if I can't be me, then what fun is it to fit in? So he took off his disguise. You, they shouted. Boo, they shouted. Oliver was glad to be himself again, but he was also back to being alone. I don't fit anywhere, he thought. How can I be part of something exciting, wild, or out of this world if it's just me? But then Oliver looked up, and what did he see? A bunch of UUs! He wasn't alone. <laughs> That's not in the book. He wasn't alone. Others had taped, cut, and glued in search of their fit, too. Oliver discovered that you can't rush or force your fit. All you can do is be yourself. Your fit will find you. And it will feel perfect. Don't forget, no puzzle is complete without every last piece, including you and Oliver, too. Thanks for listening. Very nice, thank you. As a community of people that care about each other, we share our various joys and concerns. And as I said, this is the time of our service that we do our communion ritual. Uh, we invite you to share your ups and downs as you desire. You can come to the front and drop a stone for any joy or concern shared or confidential, expressed or held in your heart. As you drop your stone, may you experience the spreading of love and support uh, if you filled out a card, you can bring it to me. On the card, again, indicate whether your comment is to be confidential or to be shared. Uh, if you need to stay where you are with your card and unable to come up, feel free to raise the card and someone will get it and bring it to me. Uh, if you're attending virtually, uh, now's the time you may write your joys and concerns in the comments section of the Facebook Live. So at this time, welcome for our joys and concerns.
Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Carol. And Renee, would you drop a stone for my personal wish for peace and love in every one of us and peace and love in the world? We drop stones for joys and concerns not spoken, and we drop another for joys and concerns that we will experience in the coming week. Let's now just take a moment of silence as we hold all of these joys and concerns in our hearts. Thank you. And now it's time for our offering. The important work of this fellowship is possible because of your generous contributions of time, talent, and money. Every contribution of every size is helpful and appreciated. As we pass the offering baskets, we invite you to share financially. If you prefer, you may give at our website by texting online or mailing checks to our office. At this time, I'll ask Melly and other hosts to please come forward and pass the offering baskets. As we said, today we are celebrating members, those who've been a member for a long time and those who've just recently joined. We all have different reasons for joining this place when we join and, and for why we've stayed. As the Articles of Incorporation talked about, a place to bring your family to learn values and forming beliefs, to honor each of our religious backgrounds, whatever it might be, and to learn about others too. It's a place to be with like-minded people but also to celebrate our diversity. And it's a place to learn about the needs of our community and what we can do about it together. So today we're gonna hear from four people who actually signed this book. And after the service, uh, well, we'll be signing today, somebody else will be signing, but we'll also leave it up here if you'd like to see where your name was and what year and how you wrote back then. Um, but today we're gonna hear from four very special members. Betty Lou Lancaster, She's the first person that we have still in this book. Uh, she joined in October of 1969 is what it says. Then we also will have Jean Vinzant, a member since February 2001. Then Leanda Gavin from April of 2014. And then last but not least is Joseph Amanderas, one of our newest member who joined just last May. So Betty Lou, if you will start us out. Why do I go to church? Habit. It's what you do on a Sunday morning. Uh, taking an hour at the end of the week for thoughtful contemplation fulfills a need for me. And at a Unitarian church, I don't have to throw away reason and logic. I don't have to accept a theology that I don't believe. But why did I join UUFF? When my husband joined the law school faculty in 1968, we moved to Fayetteville and we knew about the fellowship because the dean, the law school dean, Ralph Barnhart, was one of the founders. So we attended UUFF, liked it, signed the book a year later in 1969, and 55 years later, I am still here. Why? Why am I still here? <laughs> Three reasons, the service, the religious education, and the people. 
The service. In the 1960s, the UU congregation was small. This room was only half the size. You see this beam here? That was, that was the original wall. Um, the, um, however, the hymn singing was robust. Out of about 30, 40 attendees at the most, there were four professional singers, Jack and Jan Grow and Dick and Alma Brothers with good, strong, operatic voices. Uh, there was no minister. A talk was given either by one of the members or a visitor, sometimes a minister from another local church, often the minister from the Little Rock or one of the two Tulsa UU churches. Bill Gold from a Tulsa UU church liked us so well and was here so often his, his board finally made him quit. <laughs> um, a favorite and frequent speaker was a member, philosophy professor Tom Vernon. I brought with me three books by Tom, and, and I assume they're available in our library downstairs. I also have with me a couple of uh, uh, sermons by Bill Gold. Uh, in those days, there was always a talk back. Members commented on the talk and challenged the speaker but this stopped when we hired our first minister. <laughs> uh, so my husband and I liked the services, but what about our three children? Their religious education was good, or we parents would not have been able to stay. Our children got the best religious education, and now that our adult ed, our adult RE is an important reason why I'm still here. Uh, but probably the best reason we stayed, stuck, got involved, was the people. The members of the fellowship, many of whom were leaders in the community as well as the fellowship. At one time, did you know a majority of the members of the Fayetteville City Council were members of this fellowship? Um, we socialized a lot and became close friends with the other members who were wonderful people. And having participated in some circle suppers recently, I'm reminded of what a great group of people we have here today. The services, the religious education, and the wonderful people, those are some of the reasons I joined the UUFF and have stayed for 55 years. My name is Gene Vinzant, and uh, been a member since February of 2001. In 2000, year 2000, I was a Bible professor at a conservative Christian college. Um, I don't want to say the name. It starts with an H, uh, <laughs> and it ends in Arding. Um, <laughs> Very conservative and affiliated with the Churches of Christ. And in fact, uh, my family goes way back. I think I've traced it back to a fifth great-grandfather was the first preacher in my family. But in the year 2000, I was pushed by my students, by myself, by my conscience to go back and do what it says on number four of our principles there's a bookmark. If any of you are new and not familiar with these seven principles, uh, number four is a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. <laughs> Believe it or not, youngsters, the Internet existed in the year 2000. <laughs> and it, it played a key role. I think it still does play a key role in a lot of people discovering us. Um, but I found that this was the only place where I fit like the, the puzzle piece that didn't fit anywhere else. I tried other places, um, and this is the only one that would accept someone like me uh, with, the, with the views that I had come to, being what I would call myself a humanist. Why go to church at all, though, as, as Betty Lou said? Why go anywhere? Why not just stay home? Uh, I need to be with other people. I need to be reminded of what's important. I need to be challenged. I need to learn new stuff. I need a community that supports me when I'm going through a tough time and that I can support when they're going through a tough time. I need to be with a group of people that's making a difference in the world. 
And I need to be here for the next person who finds themselves without a home and is looking for somewhere where they fit. Thank you. I'm Leanda. I um, have been a member here since 2014. Uh, I, right now I'm a member of the board and the Chalice team and I teach religious uh, exploration for the youth downstairs. Uh, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness in rural South Arkansas. Um, and if you don't know much about Jehovah's Witnesses, I, for the sake of brevity, just think like um, cult light, sort of. <laughs> um, and the surrounding religions in, in South Arkansas, whether or not either uh, denomination would like to admit it, I really have more in common uh, with each other than they both like to think. So when I was around 21-ish, um, I took a quiet exit, and as is the way in that faith tradition, I immediately had to part ways with most of my friends and family that I had known my entire life. And I followed the path that many who leave restrictive religious re uh, institutions run straight for, which is anti-religion. So a few years I kind of ambled along and my older children's, children's father and I separated. He's, he's still a Jehovah's Witness today. Um, and I lost most of the remaining folks that I knew uh, in my life at that point. So I remarried this time to a Southern Baptist who coincidentally was also president of the Cleveland County Young Republicans Club at the time. And that went about how you would expect for a while. Um, but we had some background, me and this guy. Um, we had been kids together, and we fought a lot then too. But I knew something about him. He was one of those people that sort of innately took the time to reevaluate things every now and then. Um, he thought critically, and I had seen him be brave enough to change his mind um, if he judged that his position was not correct. This is a rarity in the community that I grew up in, and it turns out it's kind of a rarity in the outside world as well. So without this uh, environmental factor and the ingrained sort of belief systems of our use, we eventually both figured out that we had, a, we had very common values. Um, so here was us in 2012, me, with a reactive atheist sort of softening into this agnostic, we're searching for something, but very stubbornly insisting that I don't need something, um, a disillusioned former Baptist conservative turned liberal. The two children from my first marriage who still spent half their time in the Jehovah's Witness world, and then Evelie was on the way. And one Sunday we found ourselves here, and again, and again, and this went on for like two years. But uh, most of the beginning of that time, we, uh, were, we were sort of spring-loaded. We, we me, I was waiting for some sort of creep factor to drop in. I was, I'd soft. <laughs> I'd softened towards searching um, for a spiritual path, but I was still very anti-organized religion. Um, and Kobe, I think he's, he's very tenuous a place in his life. He was very um, confused about where he was with God and Christianity and sort of his entire worldview up until this point. So uh, every Sunday we sat um, waiting for him to be offended by something that came from this pulpit, that he was like outside of his comfort zone. Um, but none of that ever happened, and we're still here. The moment I think that I realized that this was my home, um, at some point I was sitting in a service, and I recognized that I had never in my life been in a room full of people that I knew valued the same things that I did, that I could, that I could freely believe things and express them here. Now, was that some kind of like anomaly that people would slowly back away from in mid-conversation? And not that I did express anything at that point, because, you know, we're still, like, not talking to people or trying to make friends because we're <laughs> not sure. Until, until we were, were sure that it was right for us to be here. And it was. And I feel that feeling every time I walk into those doors still. The feeling of being safe, of connection, of wonder and questioning. It never gets old. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlotte Taylor and the Membership Connections team for inviting me to share. Uh, my family and I have extremely enjoyed our short time at UUFF, 
And while we feel unbelievably welcome every time we come here, I am definitely looking for more ways to get involved. Um, one, e one event which I have attended as part of UUF was the Razor Bash last August. I sat at a table on campus with Reverend Renee and Enoch uh, and a few others, and I did kind of similar to what I'm doing right now, is I talked about what UUF means to me. Uh, I really enjoyed that event because, well, because I got to kind of sneak in with the young people on college and pretend like I was a young person myself and interact with young people, which I love to do. And because I got to bring my youngest daughter, who's only 20 months old, I got to bring her there with me and to just talk about UUF, and it was great. Uh, the Razor Bash was one extremely small way in which I've gotten involved with UUF, and I am definitely looking for more ways to get involved. Uh, one of the things which I most enjoy about this fellowship is the adult discussion hour before service, which was unbelievable today. I find it endlessly fascinating and compelling and emotionally moving to join this group of people who come from such diverse life backgrounds. I really enjoy how typically uh, Brooke Eldridge is our leader, and she does such an amazing job every week, not just of facilitating the discussion, but of making sure that every single person knows they're welcome. Brooke does an amazing job every single week. Our leaders always do a great job. I enjoy the variety of the topics that we discuss and focus on. Often the conversations focus on social or emotional or demographical issues. Like today, we talked about the modern American family. And sometimes the discussions explore theological or spiritual topics. I've learned that by participating in these discussions, and I try extremely hard to be a good listener. Uh, and by trying really hard to be a good listener, and listening to what people offer to share, I can find extremely deep personal meaning in the challenging and sometimes unanswerable questions that we discuss. Why I joined UUFF. It was my wife's suggestion to first come here. It definitely was. And she suggested joining because we were looking for a community in which religious ideas and questions could be openly voiced and shared. This need to share religious ideas was especially important for our children. The children, uh, Maple Walker and Wynn, our three children, they seem to regularly experience various church-centric ideas and language in their daily life, no matter what we do. Uh, this is especially Christian-centric inspired ideas, and we feel like the kids sometimes don't really know how to respond to these questions about God and other religious issues. The children encounter these ideas at school, on TV, in books, uh, no matter what we might do or wish as parents. And so a big part of why my family and I continue coming to UUF is the religious exploration and education courses for the children. I value these classes for providing the children with the critical thinking skills they need to just barely start to decide for themselves what might be important to them instead of being told what they should do. They're, they're bombarded with these ideas, and so they needed the tools to decide what's important for themselves. That's why we come to UUF. Uh, these decision-making and critical thinking skills which they develop here leave the children better prepared in this society where they're bombarded with ideas that they can't understand. Uh, and like I, like I just mentioned, this lifelong religious journey, even though it is just barely beginning for the children, and even though the children clearly enjoy the non-religious elements of UUF, like Alex is probably chasing them on the playground right now, and that's <laughs> a big reason why they come here, or playing games with the school-age kids in Miss Stephanie's class, that's why they come here, but it's important to our entire family to come here so they can start to develop these critical thinking skills and decision-making skills for themselves. Uh, thank you so much, Charlotte Taylor, for inviting me here, and I am so excited to get involved in more ways and to get to know more people here. Thank you so much. Well, my name is Susie Schrader, and um, I'm the second oldest person here <laughs> since I joined in the 80s, and I think that's about 40 years. Um, and so a lot of you, most of you who know me, know that I'm a retired CPA, and the entire 40 years that I've spent here has been in finances and money. Um, and so I was asked to uh, talk about why it's important to support UUF financially, but I'm going rogue. Sorry, Charlotte. <laughs> uh, and I see some more. So uh, I had a, the fortune of, of going to Alaska uh, a couple months ago, and there was a, a member of the, the local, the Tinglet people, if anybody who's familiar with the Alaskan culture, 
And he was a master at telling stories and getting his points across with his storytelling. So I thought, I want to be a storyteller, you know, and so I'm going to have a little different approach. Um, but so my story is once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in a house that was not much better than a shoe. She was the youngest of four children in a home that was not a happy place. Her mother and father were not always nice to each other, and her older brother was a bully. The basic needs of their household were not met, and the little girl and her sister learned how to take care of each other and became quite skilled at avoiding conflict while learning how to do household chores. But fortunately, in their town, over 110 years before, 48 determined citizens organized, quote, a society founded on the principles of Unitarianism, established for the advancement of the principles of morality and ultimate good of society. Does that sound a little familiar? <laughs> in 1874, and it dawned on me, that was just right after the Civil War, they built a beautiful church of locally made red brick that still stands today. It had a majestic carved podium from which the minister spoke each week. I guarantee you it didn't cost $19,000. <laughs> Just a little side note. So every Sunday, the little girl's family of six piled into their old rusted Buick to attend services at the Unitarian Church. For one day a week, that whole family was able to come together and forget the conflict in, in the house, listen to the weekly sermon, go to the adult discussion group, the youth programs, the children's Sunday school. The little girl felt comfortable that there was no one there to judge her secondhand clothes. And she loved talking with Mrs. Tower who made clay figurines and gave her a gift of a special ceramic deer. She learned how to be part of a loving community and maintained that maintained their historic building and she applied those skills as she became an adult. The coffee hour snack satisfied her tummy when she came to church without breakfast. In Sunday school, she learned gratitude for the gifts from Mother Nature, and she loved going on field trips to learn about other religions and meet friends who didn't know about her shameful home life. As she grew older, she was thankful to be paid in Sunday school because that way she could afford hot lunch at school. So the story has a happy ending. She was armed with self-confidence. She went after uh, high school. She left home. She met the man of her dreams and brought him home to the church and got married uh, with the minister that had been so kind to her as a child. And they lived happily ever after. So back to my assignment that I'm supposed to be here for the financials. Well, I could use all my accounting skills. We could get spreadsheets. We could get budget categories. I could tell you that we will spend over 164000 this coming year to pay our staff and, our, and keep our facilities going. I could explain why we need to exceed last year's pledges of 115 because our congregation is growing, and be, just like Renee had mentioned last Sunday, we're going to need more ministerial services and more administrative staff to make our uh, congregation grow in Northwest Arkansas. I could explain that it takes a minimum of 16,000 for our admin costs and 24,000 to keep the building and facilities. And I might even explain that we need some more money to upgrade all our technology and get some better computers for everybody. But I'm not going to tell you any of that because I think most of you already know that it takes a lot of money to run an organization like this. And we need a lot, we need money, finances, but we also need volunteers because it's the, the actual human hours here that really make the big difference. So, but instead, I want you to remember I haven't been able to say this without breaking up that little girl and her story. And I want to ensure that UU Fayetteville is here for all the future little girls, the little boys, the non-binary youth, and the old girls and the old boys who need a safe place to be themselves. I love the story today. So please remember the children, and when you return your pledge form, and please be generous with your treasure, your time, and your talent to keep this place 
and we and hope that the rest of us have happy endings too. Thank you. Good morning. So I'm just going to start with a quote from our former president Barack Obama because I am speaking on involvement. The best way to not feel hopeless is to get up and do something. Don't wait for good, good things to happen to you. If you go out and make some good things happen, you will fill the world with hope. You will fill yourself with hope. Serving your fellowship will fill you with hope and community. I know this from experience because two and a half years ago, I began watching UU services online during COVID. I felt an instant connection with the principles and my curiosity was sparked to learn more about the UU faith and the people involved here at UUFF. Today, my curiosity and learning continues through the work I do as board treasurer and co-lead for Web of Life. We need more curious minds and willing hands to make this fellowship the best it can be. Our volunteer board and numerous other groups provide many opportunities for involvement with something for everyone. The board is an integral piece of our fellowship's governance and is seeking new members for 2024 to join us in executing our strategic plan. If planning policies and problem solving are your, or are your thing, the board may be the right place for you. Other groups in need of volunteers include our coffee hour team led by Carol Olson, the grounds team led by Laura Brewer, our game day parking lot fundraiser led by Jean Vinzant, and our membership team led by Charlotte Taylor. We are always looking for volunteers in these areas. And we're also looking for someone to lead a team who can educate, educate and engage the fellowship on our Realm software tour, tools. We have an amazing um, new software that we've been using, but we really need to get um, the rest of the congregation familiarized and using those tool, tools more regularly. And we have many other groups and committee, committees that rely on eager, eager volunteers to make an impact within our fellowship and among the wider community. If social justice, environmental justice, spiritual education, creating opportunities for genuine human connections, or service and event planning call to you, please consider getting involved. It's never too early or too late, and for many groups, you don't even have to be a member. You are always welcome and deeply appreciated when you answer the call to action. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Natalie and everyone. This was it's just such an amazing thing to really be a part of, and I'm incredibly grateful to be here in any capacity. My name is Joanna Person Michener, and I'm the president of the board this year. Um, and today is a really special day because we're welcoming a new member into our fellowship. Membership is a big decision. It's not just about belonging. It's about commitment to our covenant, to the vision and the mission of our fellowship, our principles, as well as joining with all Unitarian Universalists in promoting our principles in the world around us. And we do a lot of that here. <laughs> we can always do more, but we have um, very engaged members and I'm just really grateful to be a part of this community and to see it grow. Now, Reverend Renee is gonna share something with us. Friends, members choose to join for many different reasons including intellectual stimulation, religious education, as you've heard, emotional support, and personal and spiritual growth in a communal environment. Seeking to be a member of a Unitarian Universalist congregation comes when we want to give more and to get more in life. It comes when we are ready to join a community of like-minded people who are exploring the deeper meanings of life, of how we relate to each other and to the world around us. It comes when we look at our world and find it in need of peace and justice, 
and believe that we can help because we can. Knowing that we will have a greater impact acting in a community rather than alone. As we welcome this newest member in our community, I encourage all of you to reflect upon your commitment to this congregation. I, I know I am. Recall why you are a member. Think about how this fellowship supports your spiritual journey and how can you support another member in theirs. How can you keep your membership as fresh as the day you signed the book? Next up is Charlotte. Well, we've been talking a lot about membership today, and there are three things to becoming a member here at the fellowship. One is attending a new UU class or coming from another Unitarian <coughs> fellowship so that you know how we are different and alike from other congregations. Um, the second is making a pledge commitment to be involved, to give your financial resources, and to give your time. And the third, as we've talked about, is signing the book. So today we're very excited to uh, have Christina Corbett join us. And if you would like to come up, Christina, I'll meet you. And if your kids would like to come too, they are Is it Christiane? Is that right? Okay. <laughs> well, by becoming a member of this fellowship, we ask that you share your time and your talent and your treasure with us as you're able. And we ask that you be curious about this place, its people, and become a part of our community and as we build a, our vision for the future together. Are you ready to commit yourself to this community? Yes, to Unitarian Universalism and to our covenant? Yes. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. On the table is our treasured book that Charlotte referred to. It tells a long and distinguished history of our congregation as was exemplified by um, Betty's talk today, as well as Susie's. A very human story of the life of a covenanted religious community. It's kind of hard to believe that Unitarian Universalism even exists sometimes. It's a story that is still being written and will continue with your help. When you've signed, you signify that you are in covenant with us. We have a certificate and um, welcoming gifts for you. Um, are they, have the gifts been given? <laughs> so, will the, will the members of the unit... Terry and Universalist Fellowship of Fayetteville, please rise in body or spirit. As members and keepers of this congregation, you're asked to share with these new members the passion, this new member, the passion and promise that you bring to this community. You're asked to learn their names, their stories, their hopes and dreams, and to let them know yours. I look forward to getting to know you better. Make room for them at the table, the activities, and the committees, but also be gentle and let them choose their own commitments. And remember that they will need your care at times. And when you're in need, they will be among those who will care for you. Understand that as they become more deeply connected to this community, their contributions will change UUFF. And that change will be for the better because of their presence. 
Members of UUFF, do you now pledge to walk in covenant with these new member, with this new member and welcome them into their new religious home? If so, say we do. We do. Everybody, please remain standing and Yes, and together let us speak the words of the welcome as projected on the screen. In a covenant of fellowship and love, we unite to cultivate reverence and thoughtfulness, to promote spiritual growth and ethical commitment, to minister to each other's needs and to those of humanity, to celebrate the sacred moments of life's passage and to honor the interconnection with all at the heart of our being. We welcome, we welcome you, you to, to this fellowship, fellowship with, with all our hearts. I join this fellowship with all my hearts. So may it be. Welcome to you, UFF Christiane. Now Joe's going to come. We are going to sing our favorite uh, hymn at the end of this new member ceremony. We've been singing this particular song uh, for about seven years uh, at each new member ceremony. Uh, this is called This House is Yours by Jen Rapp. much. We do love that song. We need a tambourine, though, with it, I think. <laughs> We'd like to uh, extinguish our flame, and then we'll have a few announcements and a closing. So please join me. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Thank you all for a wonderful service. Uh, I just uh, feel bad that there are a number of people that we know who are traveling today who are not here, because we usually have a, uh, a lot more people here too, but uh, know that we give them 
uh, are, th this house is theirs as well. So, uh, just Great, sounds like a great time. So um, I think Charlotte also has another announcement. You wanna get up? It's not really an announcement. I just wanna thank everybody for being involved today. I, I hope everybody will take time during coffee hour to ask questions about each other. Why'd you join? Why are you here? And these conversations I want to hear more about. So please enjoy each other. If you have not signed the membership book, and I know there's a couple of you who have joined, I'm going to leave it up here and you can, you can sign it. Um, or if you want to go find your name and like I said, see what you used to write like when you joined. But uh, thank you for participating today. And let's celebrate all of us today and each other. And as Joe said, those that cannot be here today. So thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Go in peace and uh, trouble the world with your love. <laughs>